Darth Maul versus Count Dooku, which character is more evil? In the Star Wars universe, both of these members of the Sith are prominent villains, each bringing their unique brand of evil to the galaxy. To answer the question, let's take a look at certain criteria, starting off with their background. For Darth Maul, he was indoctrinated into the Sith by Sidious at a tender age which highlights the fact that he had no choice in the matter unlike many villains who turned to evil of their own volition. Under the tutelage of Sidious, Maul was shaped to become a ruthless assassin for the dark side, being subject to grueling physical and mental training and becoming conditioned to see the Jedi as his greatest enemy. After his defeat and dismemberment by Obi-Wan in The Phantom Menace, Maul was driven insane by his near-death experience and the loss of his legs. He was rescued and given cybernetic legs, after which he proceeded to begin his reign in the galaxy by taking over some of the most powerful crime syndicates and installing himself as ruler of Mandalore. As for Count Dooku, his origin is somewhat the opposite of Darth Maul's. He was born in the elite social class of his planet. And before he was old enough to remember, he was admitted into the Jedi Order after he was abandoned in a forest by his father. Due to his background as an aristocrat, Dooku had an aloof and lofty personality which resulted in much ridicule and ostracization from his peers at a young age. This personality eventually included a rebellious side that led to much friction between him and the Jedi Order, as Dooku felt that the Jedi weren't living up to their potential of being the archetypes of justice and morality within the galaxy. Combined with other factors that would lead to his turning to the dark side, such as his encounters with the Tirataka, Dooku eventually joined Sidious, replacing Darth Maul as his apprentice. From there, Dooku would become a key player in the Clone Wars primarily through his political maneuvers, utilizing his aristocratic background and diplomatic acumen to lead the Separatist movement and exploiting his status and charisma to manipulate galactic events. So in looking at both Maul and Dooku's background, it would appear that Darth Maul had the bigger hurdle to overcome in terms of avoiding the path of evil. He didn't choose it of his own will but was thrust into it without his consent. Now of course, Later on in his adult life, Darth Maul had more than ample opportunity to change his ways and reform himself, but there is a huge disadvantage when all you've known since your youthful formative years are the nefarious ways of the dark side. Dooku may have felt that the Jedi Order was a massive disappointment, but that's hardly an excuse for his turning to the dark side and the subsequent galactic destruction attributed to him. So in terms of their background, I'd say Count Dooku comes off as the more evil of the two. Next, let's take a look at their driving forces. For Maul, his main driving forces are hatred, revenge, and greed expressed in the accumulation of power. Since his youth, Maul was instilled a deep-seated hatred of the Jedi by Sidious, a hatred that started a bloodlust against the Jedi in general, but later became more specific in revenge against Obi-Wan for depriving him of his legs and also against Sidious for abandoning him. Subsequently, Maul would be driven by his pursuit of power, forming the sordid criminal syndicate known as the Shadow Collective, taking control of Mandalore and committing atrocities to solidify his power. And herein lies the issue with Maul, that his greed would clash with his desire for revenge. With his master Sidious abandoning him, Maul is free of the hold of the dark side and can choose to start over a new life with his brother. And if he wanted to exact vengeance, on Sidious, he could have exposed him to the Jedi Order, which I'd imagine would significantly impede his plans. Instead, it's a testament to the greed of Maul that he coveted the position of his master, Sidious, to the extent that he would postpone the fulfillment of his desire for revenge. As for Count Dooku, his main drivers are disillusionment, prideful ambition, and discrimination. We've already seen his ideological disillusionment with the Jedi, judging them to be ineffective in the midst of a corrupt republic. Dooku's intentions started off in a noble light, wanting the Jedi to become beacons of morality, but poetically Dooku's ideals would become corrupted, with his desire to protect the galaxy degenerating over time into ruling it with an iron fist, believing only he could bring order. Beyond this lustful ambition for power, Dooku would also develop a disdain for non-human species, which further emboldened 
his manipulative and controlling side as he used his influence and strategic mind to advance the separatist cause. So when looking at both the driving forces of Maul and Dooku, we find the common themes of greed and ambition outlining them, with the difference being that Maul is pursuing power out of greed, while Dooku is doing it more out of pride or a lofty self-image. Of course, we must not forget the role that revenge has in the overall scheme of Maul's plans. Every bit of progress he makes in the advancement of his criminal empire is another step to his retribution against Kenobi and Sidious. But when comparing Maul's drivers with that of Dooku's, I'm not sure which is worse, and perhaps in this regard, both characters are somewhat about the same morally. Moving on, let's take a look at some of their actions. Now over the course of the canon, both characters have racked up a long list of atrocities and it's beyond the scope of this video to cover them all. For the sake of expediency, here are some of the highlights. For Darth Maul before the invasion of Naboo and the reveal of his existence to the Jedi, he was responsible for the capture and death of a Jedi, Padawan, who had been taken hostage by Zev Rexus. After which, we have his most impactful kill, that being the death of Qui-Gon Jinn. Subsequently, in his quest for revenge, we see another side of Darth Maul, that of sadism, when he successfully exacts some measure of revenge against Obi-Wan when he causes the death of Duchess Satine, an act which brought Maul as much gratification as it did sorrow for Kenobi. And of course, there are the numerous miscellaneous crimes that he commits in his tenure as the leader of the Shadow Collective in an attempt to secure more power. As for Count Dooku, he was responsible for the formation of the clone army, which was eventually under the control of the Sith. The death and destruction caused by Order 66 can at least be partially attributed to him, as it was Dooku who dictated that inhibitor chips of the clones be modified to result in the fulfillment of the revenge of the Sith. Apart from that, Dooku is also responsible for perpetuating the state of conflict in the galaxy, using his commanding demeanor to recruit more planetary systems to the Separatist cause, a cause which resulted in much bloodshed across a war-torn galaxy. On a smaller scale, Dooku is also guilty of some measure of sadism, just as with Maul. Torture or death was a common punishment for his subordinates, with Ventress being a recipient of the former, but most egregious of all, Dooku was responsible for the death of his own biological sister and his one and only childhood friend. So that's it for their highlighted list of actions. Now let's look at their redemptive qualities, if any. For Darth Maul, the most apparent redemptive trait that we can find would be that of his genuine affection for his brother and his mother, which we see upon their passing. For Dooku, his redemptive traits are just as few and far between like Maul's, and the most notable one would be that of his relationship with Qui-Gon Jinn. Dooku appears to have some strong emotional affinity towards his former Padawan, exhibiting sorrow over Qui-Gon's death and reminisces over the relationship they could have continued over on the dark side as master and apprentice. In fact, Dooku's pitch to Obi-Wan to join him on the dark side is ultimately rooted in his fondness for Qui-Gon. On a side note, let's take a look at a personality flaw that these characters exhibited. For Darth Maul, it's suggestible that his flaw would be an overconfidence, which manifests in toying with his victims while they still had a fighting chance. This is seen no clearer than in his duel against Obi-Wan on Naboo. Maul can only blame himself for the loss of his legs, as he should have taken the steps to secure a decisive victory instead of delaying it. For Dooku, perhaps his personality flaw would be a failure to read the room and falling for the sorely mistaken belief that his vision for the Republic was aligned with that of Darth Sidious, who merely saw the unsuspecting Dooku as a stepping stone, a mere pawn to be used and discarded when his value had run its course. While both Darth Maul and Count Dooku are formidable and evil in their own right, their backgrounds, motivations, and actions highlight different aspects of their malevolence. Darth Maul embodies raw hatred and a relentless desire for revenge. His actions are fueled by personal vendettas and a need for power and control through sheer brutality and terror. Count Dooku represents ideological corruption and manipulation. His sophisticated and strategic approach to evil involves large-scale deception, political maneuvering, and orchestrating 
galaxy-wide conflict. In terms of sheer malevolence and the scope of their impact, Count Dooku might be considered more evil due to his significant role in facilitating the Clone Wars and manipulating countless lives for the Sith's grand plan. However, Darth Maul's personal vendettas and ruthless nature make him a more viscerally terrifying villain. Ultimately, the measure of their evil can be subjective, but Count Dooku's strategic manipulation and the broad consequences of his actions arguably have a more profound and far-reaching effect on the galaxy.